Chong. I graduated from uh, Melbourne Uni in, in Australia and I specialized in accounting and finance. Uh, I got my chartered practicing accounting in year 2002. Yeah, in Intune, I run the business development segment. Yeah, I'm also a certified partner accounting running with my wife. My wife is actually the other partner that runs the firm. My name is Lily Yong. Um, I'm graduated uh, with a corporate finance degree from University of Adelaide, Australia. Uh, my first job is with Ernst & Young a accounting firm. Uh, for five years, then I moved on to manage an internal audit department for an Australian listed company. I'm a member of Certified Practicing Accountant Australia and also a member of Malaysian Institute of Accountant. So in Intune, I am the managing partner. Uh, I take care of the sales business development and also overseeing the operations at Intune. So I've been a practicing accountant for the last 20 over years. The company was started long, long time ago when I was still with KPMG. So during that time, uh, I got a lot of friends who are having complication and stress when they run business. And most of their challenge is they cannot hire an accountant. So as a result, they, they always only hire maybe a club or an exec. A lot of time, they have a lot of issues with their finance, payment, uh, sometimes the money gets lost. Sometimes the accounts don't close in time, payment is not done in time. So the time when they wanted to hire me, that I was thinking, how are they going to pay me? Like if they were to hire me and I charge them 10000 for SME, how can they afford me? So I went back and I think and think and then one day I got this idea, this idea just popped up. If five of them combine, each one maybe pay me 3000 a month, then I can serve five of them at one shot. I become like an HQ accountant to five of them then I can assemble a team to actually support them and that's how Intune was formed. In terms of the company, our team structure is divided into sales and operation. So uh, it, uh, the sales is very simple. We serve our client by understanding their need and then we provide them the solution. In terms of the operation, it's divided into two segments currently. We have the finance, which take care of the day-to-day -day accounting for our client from payment to preparing the financial statement. Another team that we have is doing the HR and payroll service to ensure that the day-to-day -day of the salary and remuneration, including compliance, are taken care of. As an accountant, as a service provider, we need to be able to sync along, tune into the processes of our client and customize. For example, maybe a manufacturing client will be very different from a trading client. So Intune means as a provider, we are tuning into their needs and requirements. The vision of Intune is to be the leading finance and human resource outsourcing provider in Malaysia. In this vision, we want to create financially driven entrepreneurs and businesses who run their business based on numbers, analytics in driving their business to their goals. The mission of Intune is to support every small medium enterprises becoming large by being their strong finance and HR pillars for their businesses. This means that we are providing them a team of knowledgeable professionals with strong processes and workflow to support them in their growth journey becoming large. There are three main types of services being provided at Intune. Uh, number one is the finance, number two is the human resource, and number three is the consultancy. So in terms of finance, so what we do is that we do the everyday accounting and finance functions for our small medium enterprises clients, like you know, preparing payments, even issuing invoice, official receipts, reconciling their sales uh, collection on an everyday basis, up to giving them a financial dashboard and accounts every month, up to on a half yearly basis to sit with them and review their financial dashboards, and at the end of the year, to take care of their audit and taxes on their behalf. That's on the finance side. So the second type of service that we provide for our client is human resource related, which means we take care of their payroll, we make sure that the payrolls are calculated correctly, accurately, on time and in compliance with all labor laws, EPF, so etc. And then taking care of the leave for their staff 
and making sure that at year end, you know, all the forms, all the compliance matters with income tax office is complied with. So, in terms of HR, we also assist our clients to issue HR-related letters. Like when a new staff come on board, to give them the employment letter, when they confirm and you know, if there's any increase in salary, bonus, we help them out with all those pay. Good evening everybody. It's time again for Intune Freedom Series. So to, this evening will be a very exciting series. Uh, in Intune, we are here to support SME businesses to become large and we take care of two major areas in their business. One is the HR side, which includes payroll and all the compliance matter. Another side is finance. Finance is the is the fuel and the blood of every organization. Good evening, everybody. My name is Alex. I'm one of the director and co-founder of Intune Outsourcing. And tonight I have my colleague with us, and she just joined us recently. She's a great accountant. Uh, let me introduce uh, Miss Shopping. Hi, Miss Shopping. Hello, Alex. Good to see yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, maybe you can introduce yourself and let the audience know who you are and your background. Okay, um, my name is Yok Ting. Uh, my role here is accountant in Intune. Um, and what I do here is mainly, um, it's on the review of the financial statements, the management accounts, and also uh, maybe a bit of troubleshooting. Um, the tax part is I also oversee the review of the tax comp. And of course, uh, some other sections, uh, some other area, like for example, consultation. Uh, jobs, if there is, is also mainly on a review of the management accounts and maybe to assist also like for example in terms of business risk if there's any identification and suggestion. So uh, those are the G's nah, of what I do. And your background? You were from... Oh, my background. Okay, uh, talking about the background. Um, I, I had experience of uh, 15 years in Ernst & Young. Yeah, and also um, a couple of years, four years in KPMG um, at the very beginning of my career. And I got half a year experience in PwC. So um, beginning earlier part of my career is more of auditor, auditor role. And uh, two years in EY is also auditor. Thereafter, I moved to technical, yeah, accounting technical. Yeah, I can work for that because you are technically very strong in terms of all <laughs> Thank the you. FRS, I, uh, I, FRS, even sometimes I, I myself is not so up to date as compared to. So yeah, in India, we have a, a full-time accountant that just look into your day-to-day -day finances for you. So today we're going to talk about some of the common pains that our SME have, you know, the, the headache that they always have so that we can hopefully find some Panadol and some vitamin C's for them. So what are some of the common pains in, in your experience working with us and some of our clients? Yeah, uh, briefly, probably I will just break it to a few areas. Uh, big one, you can imagine like reporting. And then another part will be compliance. And another one is in terms of funding and uh, investors. Lah. So in, in from the perspective of reporting, so what are the headache that a uh, business owner had? So let's look at the scope. Like for example, okay, um, scope meaning to say that uh, which part of it, like maybe I just break it to reporting. Reporting means, okay, business owner, you run the operation. So you want to know what is the result of the operation. So then we call it this a dashboard or management accounts to see, okay, how much sales you have already done, you know, and then expenses and what is your uh, profits for the month. And also maybe you, the, they would like to look at the cash flow part. Okay, so the thing is, uh, they need a competent team to do all that. So without a competent team, uh, the issue there is like, for example, it could be garbage in, garbage out, things that uh, people don't understand and they record. So certain things that it is something that business owner cannot understand or they, they wouldn't be able to comprehend. Hey, why I put in so much of effort in terms of sales, but why my result is like that? Uh, so, okay, that, that's one of it. Uh. And of course, like payment, uh, at certain part of the month or quarter or year, there are, like for example, uh, there are certain things that needs to be paid. For example, from tax perspective, uh, authority actually um, expect the business owner to 
anticipate what is the results and how much tax they have to pay. So as a result of that, they have to uh, make installment plan, you know, pay every month. So those are the statutory part that they cannot miss, where if miss, if there will be penalty. And that's where they have to fork out extra money. Yeah, yeah. this is always a headache, I know. And sometimes business owner, I think maximum most business owner that I deal with, they, they know they need to handle payment. Other than that, compliance is is fly past them. And so most of the time, by the time they, they, they realize, they'll say, huh, I need to adjust my tax one and then pay a fine. Huh, there's a penalty on final tax one. And yeah. I think that's where uh, when SME don't have a full team, they may have some exec. And sometimes, to be fair, the exec are not fully equipped to be able to deal with that. And most of the time, exec get drowned in the day-to-day, -day, making sure the payment is done, making sure the invoice are issued, making sure the PO. They may not have the space to actually do the accountant role, which is to look at the whole company holistically and to plan for some of the deadline in terms of tax, like what you say, in terms of audit. And most of the time, by the time they realize, usually it's always too late. And to be fair, when I spoke to a lot of the business owner, right, I told them your penalty is more than enough to pay us for our yearly fee already. Exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. I also come across, uh, come across a case where uh, the OD is left there and every month uh, the business owner actually is serving the interest without truly able to utilize the OD. So to, to realize on a timely basis that, oh, it, I should actually, you know, ask uh, to terminate the OD uh, and, you know, so that I don't serve any more interest because that interest could be a sum that will accumulate and that sum is really not worth like, paying. So that's, yeah. that's where I think uh, a competent team of people come in um, to help the business owner actively manage. That is really useful for SME. I think the key word is active because a lot of time business owner are, not because they don't want to be active, they are very passive because they are very busy into the day-to-day -day operation. So exactly. in a lot of time, we always tell them that leave the back end to us so that they can focus where it matters. Most of them are great in operations and sales. They, they are not that great in terms of running the finance. They know bills need to be paid. That's all about it. That's all about it. Yeah, exactly. And uh, say, for example, uh, in one of our services, say the, the payment run, what our team will do is to help them to look at, like for example, cash flow. And when they notice that the cash flow is actually very low, so there will be some suggestion uh, to the business owner, like, you know, take care of the statutory and the key expenses so that, you know, the business can run like normal, like for example, electricity, rental and all that. So maybe they are too into operational and this thing could be just miss out. Mm. Yeah, so, they tend yeah. to overlook. You know, all these yeah. uh, statutory payment or regular payment, they tend to overlook. And yeah. uh, and there are also many instances when we go in and we look inside the adapters, they realize that actually a lot of people owe them money. They never really got the time to go and look at it because they haven't really done the reconciliation. They haven't done the closing. And uh, they realize that, hey, I don't have money. So I think that's where some of the big pains of being SME in terms of managing finance. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they are so busy into sales, but <laughs> business owners have to realize that you can sell, but the thing is you have to collect because you need to collect to pay your people. So that's where I think uh, I've seen some some business owners actually face, facing this issue. Yeah. Mm. And then today I just spoke to one of our clients. They have no clue about stocks. So they know they need to do a stock take and some don't even know. And then after they do the stock take, when the auditor asks them, uh, what is the valuation of the stock? They look, huh? What valuation? Then when the auditor tell them, is it last in, first out, first in, first out, average cost or standard cost, they went blur. Like, oh, what, what, what are you talking about? And, and I think this is where there is a distinction between people who run operationally and people who are running compliance because the, the Malaysian Accounting Act has certain way to recognize the stock. And when the business owners are not being prepped by the accounts team, and if they rely just on the exact, most of the time, that's where they hit, they hit the wall uh, in terms of managing yeah. audits. Yeah. True. I think uh, echoing the point that you mentioned is true because uh, some business owner that I noticed, they probably don't realize the 
importance of uh, taking note or taking putting in all these uh, regular stock count. Reason being because um, some stocks are really coming in very fast and going out very fast. Um, when the business is heavily, I mean, relying on the stocks as their key day-to-day -day bread and butter. So the thing is, uh, counting stocks even more important because that's where you actually, uh, that's where actually business owner earn their revenue. And stock being the key item in the business needs to be really taken care of in terms of, like for example, uh, in the system, like for example, day-to-day -day operation, how much stock do you have? How much you can actually uh, uh, offer and how much more you need to actually order, right? And also the records, the records are actually back end. The records that we keep actually is to, to, to reflect the substance of that condition. But in certain times, we have to flag out to owners that, hey, seems like in the stock system, there's some negative. Is it something wrong somewhere, you know, like, do you like not pass us the bills or do you actually issue to collect early, you know, where, you know, that's where we can see the back end part, but we actually can troubleshoot and, you know, give a drop a hint or highlight to the owner that maybe you need to really slow down and take a look at all this. And those who don't do stock takes, uh, I've encountered before, that when we highlight to the client, they are like a shock because auditor may not give them a clean report and they, they don't even understand the, the jargon in the audit report because audit report normally say qualify or not qualify. So to them, it's qualify or not qualify. They cannot understand the jargons. Yeah. And to, go to the point that you say, uh, the stock um, in terms of the accounting of the stocks, we also have to, um, how say, align the understanding with the business owner whether how do you want to reflect the stock value is it like the latest value is something that you want to reflect right or you want to do a weighted average uh, so because that will have implication in terms of the numbers now so i think those part are the headaches that they probably have because um you know they are just there to run the operation mm. so that is the technicality part of the management accounts uh, and also the audited financial statements yeah, so we we spoken quite a fair bit in compliance in terms of the CP204, the SSC, you know, even, I mean, I'm so glad that there's no GSC in the in the time where there's GSC, every month is like chasing, chasing for the GSC because it will affect the cash flow uh, terribly. So, yeah, so these are also some of the things that needs to be handled. The CP204 yep. that you just talked about just now and annual filing, yeah. Yep. So I think one of the also other issue is actually having adequate resources because I think SME budget is always a constraint. So uh, like in the intro video, a lot of time they cannot hire an accountant. Uh, I think a, a, a average accountant will probably cost what seven to eight thousand easily in two days. So even the budget that they have, they usually uh, go on with just an exact. And I think that's where uh, and the exec are also managing not just finance, they're probably also managing HR, payroll, admin. And I think that's when uh, a lot of the complaint or, or really important matter regarding finance is being overlooked. Not that they want it, it's due to inadequate resources. And also some of them are not competent enough when there's a changes in the act or they started a new business or a, a new way of recognizing, like what you said, even a simple thing like recognizing stocks recognizing profit based on percentage to completion method uh, some exec can be very blurred and without a guidance of a qualified accountant i think that's where a lot of time the the business go into trouble with compliance exactly that, like you say you attract all these penalty and, yeah. and all these things yeah because um i think um yeah what you say is uh, something that we seen in real life and it's a real pain where all these things happen and you know the accounts cannot come out, they didn't do any filing with SSM, and uh, you know the banks actually wanted the audited financial statement and they are not able to furnish, or in their audited financial statements, the reports are just not good enough for them to get a loan. Those are real pain in terms of doing business because those are actually source of fund. Yeah. yeah. Every, and and every of day. course, uh, I think there are also some of our clients which has funders, funders because they don't get involved in the day-to-day -day operation. So it's then it's important that the financial statements are being provided so they have uh, visibility in terms of what is going on. Because most of the time, they're just putting the funds. They want to know where the funds are going and how is the performance. So I always tell people, uh, financial number is like driving a car with a dashboard. The dashboard will tell us how much fuel we have so that at least I know if I drive this car, how far I will go to, how, how, speed, how much speed I can. 
you know, in terms of the indicator and also how many people I can carry in the car. So in terms of capacity as well. Yeah. So I think this is where uh, when business owners are looking for loans or uh, trying to woo investor, they struggle because they don't have this information. So it's always based on gut feel or instinct or feeling. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, I've seen in real life some business owner uh, actually struggling to explain to the uh, either funders or, you know, their parent company or investor that they are not able to explain the financial numbers. Uh, so, so therefore, uh, at times I've seen, like for example, Lily, the managing partner, uh, accompany client to actually go for those meetings to help to align and explain those jargons and what it means in the financial statements. Yeah. Correct, correct. Interpreting and presenting the numbers. Right. Sometimes the number is a number like a simple thing. Most SME business owners, when I speak to them and I ask them what is your break-even point, they really don't have a clue. So, and it is then that they realize that, oh, yo, I don't know, I need to do minimum sales and it's just to break even and pay my basic overhead. And, and I think these are some of the things where we add value because we then provide them the guideline so that when they are out of range, it's like a car showing that, hey, hello, you're out of fuel, ting tong, ting tong, we have that <laughs> indicator. Yeah, exactly. Uh, also to interpret the KPIs, uh, some of the KPIs that uh, investor or the funder look forward to see and they cannot just align or cannot understand. So uh, I think that's where our competent accountant actually come into picture. Correct, correct. Because a lot of time, I mean, once they go for listing, they realize the importance of all these key result area where they will look at debt ratio, debtors turnover, asset turnover. Yes. And, and, yeah. and I think this is where all these are very jargon to the business owner. So I think that's where having a, a team of accountant is where we can then help them in terms of uh, preparing the reports and our planning and even budget. Because I think a lot of business owners don't really have the time to sit down and budget. So they don't know what happened in the past. They don't really know what is happening currently. So I remember during MCO, uh, we actually sat down with every of our client to give them a view of what could happen in the next six months to see whether they have Number one, enough cash flow to last if this pandemic goes beyond six months. And based on the ruling of pandemic, whether they can sustain in terms of revenue. And if they can't, they need to do something right now instead of just sit there and wait for six months. And I think they are company who managed to pivot uh, and do something. They actually managed to crawl over the hard period and we still have about 10% drop rate. That means 10% of our client really couldn't make it through and go into financial trouble because they just don't have the ability to plan, budget, forecast, and they don't know where to control, how to manage the funds and the revenue and the collection during time of MCO. Yeah, I, I think exactly like what you mentioned, those are the key areas where they need to be able to foresee based on historical numbers and maybe do a bit of anticipation and do a bit of uh, alternative to their original plan to their business so that then they can really, uh, you know, change, uh, put some change uh, just in time, enough for them to really uh, pull through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So also, uh, yeah. let's have uh, some case study that you have uh, based on your experience that you have done uh, to see yeah. where we can also show uh, our, our, our viewers out there what are some of the real things that's happening on the ground. Okay. Okay, uh, in case study, study number one, it is a piece of work for a retail group. Well, I, I won't name what kind of retail it is, but basically the group of companies have got a, a few companies in the group and one of the company have got more than 10 outlets. So for this, uh, I've done a bit of review and what we notice here is like, for example, inventories. Um, the inventories numbers are actually not in the financial report, not in the management accounts. And the struggle that the business owners have is actually they don't, they, they, they are not able to pull the uh, inventories numbers and they didn't actually have a stock take for that. So without the stocks for a retail company is quite uh, uh, not very good now because uh, what works is in the retail company would be the stocks. The stocks will be coming in and out very fast and Without doing any regular stock take, uh, it, it doesn't help the situation. Now. So that I think we actually highlighted to the business owner to do something about it because uh, when we review, it is already past uh, the financial year end. Now. 
So that's one of the key area. Yeah. And uh, second thing is on the bank balances. When we review, we notice that the bank reconciliation uh, is only like halfway done. They only done one part of the bank reconciliation being either the um, sales part or the, the, the payment part of it. So when we look at the bank, we are not able to get a, a full picture. Yeah. yeah, full picture of how much is the bank balances, what is it used for, we are not able to tell, right? And it's because of uh, they don't have the resource uh, or very limited resource and also the accounting system doesn't really help the situation, now, right? There's too much of intervention of the manual work involved here, right? Uh, and the third point is on the staff cost. What we have seen in the PNL is the staff costs have been recorded based on cash basis, meaning to say, like for example, the by right in the PNL, it would be only the employer portion of the statutory like EPF and so, so being reflected. But in this case, even the employee portion also charged to the PNL. So this oh. is where I think the the understanding of the basic accounting uh, uh how to say it, principle is not 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 really there lah, right and. The fourth one, uh, what we observe is the internal controls. Um, there's no qualified person to actually oversee uh, the workflow, uh, being the sales processes and also you know, the financial statement close process of, of, of this group of company. So that's where we are looking at a few key areas, huh? right? In this, yeah, uh, this is a very common uh, pain of a small business owner. I mean, even this term called accrual basis, a lot of business owners don't actually understand this concept. Uh, matching, they also don't understand this concept. And that's where uh, a lot of time they get confused. I used to have one time which is very similar like this. When they collect deposit, they, they record it as revenue. They forgot that the deposit are actually refundable if they cannot deliver the work. So when the, when the client actually cancel the contract and ask them to refund, it suddenly become a huge profit in one month and a huge loss. So when we go in, I say this is not even a revenue to begin with. Until the contract commence and your work is certified, then only you recognize. So yeah, these are some of the things. Uh, I, I think partly is also competency. I think a lot of time they don't know like staff costs or this. I mean, if you if a typical business owner, they'll just take it as it is. Yeah, I pay I pay this amount. Right? So you record like that, correct, law. And I think that's where the shit hit the fans when they actually go for audit. And when they come and see us, and I think this is where it, it goes uh, a bit all over the place. Lah. Yeah, okay. true. Shall we go to case study number two? Yeah, we can. So for case study number two, this is a company in F&B uh, industry, and they actually have more than three outlets. Lah. So what happened here is uh, the company is the company is very active uh, with many outlets. So what we have seen in the review of the management accounts is the trade receivable part because it's very common during mco uh business owner actually started uh you know like online delivery and all the online order you no know, then payment by the end customer are also based on online uh, online merchant and payment gateway so what happened here is in the balance sheet we noticed that the figure really snowballed to a very huge figure and we couldn't explain because what sim simply in the balance sheet should be only the amount that the merchant actually owe, owe the company. So it cannot be such a huge figure. So uh, our team actually ended up cleaning up this, uh, this balance sheet items. Huh? And wow, uh, yeah. this is a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Because it needs to start with the merchant statements and then we do some comparison and then uh, throw up the figures, uh, reflect the substance. So that's what we have done uh, for, for this company. Yeah. Uh, moving to another point on the deposit, um, there are many de deposits involved in the balance sheet. So what we what, what we see is very huge deposit figure there. And of course, um, when our team actually work on it, they actually trace back to the contracts because it's just not so easy to just cancel out the, you know, the deposits. Uh, place and also what what was refunded so it's just not workable so what happened is we actually trace back to the agreements from there we check and see what are those still in place what are not in place and we propose some cleaning up on the deposits um, then moving on on the balance sheet part um, accruals it's very common to have accruals uh, 
during the month end. Uh, briefly, it's actually, this thing is just to reflect that, okay, I approve first. When I pay subsequent to month end, this will be reversed and zero rise. So, the, 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 of course, the nicest would be what you accrue is exactly what you pay off. Then it will be nicely zero rise. But in this case, we notice that, oh, there are still some old accruals where maybe it's wrong double entry or it is actually um, didn't get reversed. So, those are the things that we actually rectify. Uh, to just to reflect, if it has been paid, that means there's something that has gone wrong in the P&L. So, from there, we actually make rectification. Uh, and, yeah, and, uh, and half of the time, business owner don't even understand accrual. So, from a, a few of the kind that last time we used to support, when the exec cannot balance anything, right? They just dump inside accruals. So then the boss look at it. Hey, everything look balanced, man. Until the accountant come in and correct, correct, correct. Oh, all the all the worms, la, The whole can <laughs> will be open in accruals. Yeah. From salary accrual to petty cash accrual to stock accrual, everything that cannot tie dump inside sure tie already. Yeah. So I think I think that's where business owner always struggle because half I think more than ninety percent of them have no clue what the hell is accrual. They just think it's an accounting term. Yeah. yeah, so the thing is, is when we explain to them, I think it's easier because then they can appreciate what this accrual means. Not just everything just put in because they can put in, but the thing is when it reached the audit part of it, uh, that's where, you know, <laughs> a lot of things up. have to be done, uh, cleaning up. Correct, yeah. correct. And I think that's the distinction, business owner, if you're outside there listening, is to be able to talk to the right people. Uh, not to say that the exec are not competent. Sometimes they, they don't have enough experience and knowledge to handle some of this. Hence, is why the importance of having an accountant. I mean, to be an accountant in Malaysia is not easy. You have to go through a rigorous process. And to be called an accountant, we also need to be uh, registered with MIA board. And to you know go through a whole stringent process to be called an accountant. It's very easy to be called an accounts person, but to be called an accountant, the level of depth and the level of expertise that's required is really different. And I think that's when when business owner talk to an accountant, it's like, oh, now I understand. And a lot of time when, when, when you guys are talking to the exec, you will feel a big headache because they cannot breach some of the things that uh, the compliance, the, the act, the numbers and the business side. So the role of an accountant is actually to balance all this to be able to let you look at it from something that makes sense. Yep, true. Um, okay, then uh, moving on, on the tax estimate, at certain point in time, because the finance people actually have privy to all this information being because because they do the financial post process. So we probably notice that it, actually in this case, they are very active and they are actually making profits. And that's where when revision to, you know, revision to the six month or the nine month of the tax provision where they need to pay on a monthly basis, that's where they need to bridge a gap and make some decision whether do they want to preserve the cash flow, don't pay first, wait until towards the end, you know, when penalty come or the differential, pay that differential. Or they want to um, avoid the penalty uh, if it is huge. And maybe just even out a bit, pay slightly more in the you know the six or the nine month revision. That's where I think um, um, people accountants can actually value add. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how in terms of how Intune can support uh, SME to become big. So okay. one of I think I think uh, so things say a lot already about how we are here to become your back end supporter where we uh, as an accountant we manage your compliance and we, we uh, are you able to share some of uh, the other things that we do to support SME becoming large? Um, yeah, um, I think in the if you probably have listened to the beginning of the videos where Lily really talked about you know. Uh, accounting outsourcing, uh, financing outsourcing, you know, bookkeeping, and part and parcel of our work, of course, also includes the payment run, or even uh, some clients actually requested us to issue the sales invoice, you know, and also, of course, breach the statutory requirement in terms of audited financial statement to, to, to make sure that take away the pain on terms of audit, make sure SSM filing is done statutorily, and also the tax part of it, tax installment, so those are the part where I think it's more like bridging the gap of how from day-to-day -day operation, uh, you know, business owners actually make money and run their, 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 
they are operational staff, but at the same time also to fulfill the statutory, so uh, they won't be you know subject to penalty, or you know um, penalty or non-compliance uh, that will not allow them to go and get further funding, you know, uh, things like that. So um, a few key uh, packages, like Lily mentioned just now, was the actually uh, is the uh, accounting part of it, uh, recording of the accounts, and during the presentation of the accounts for certain clients. Uh, key points will actually bring up uh, to, to bring their attention to certain risk area and uh, consultation work, you know, just to troubleshoot certain area uh, so that they can actually uh, troubleshoot and quickly solve all those problems. Those are actually consultation work. Uh. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So let me summarize a bit of what uh, Sothing has said. So we have the starter package. Means if you are SME business owner and you are just starting your journey and you just wanted accounting system, uh, because we also understand as a business owner, when you are really small, uh, there's no budget yet. So usually it's we call a one leg kick lah in, in Cantonese. Okay. So when you're doing a one leg kick, you need a starter package is where we actually set up the accounting framework for you. We implement an online system for you where you can access your system anywhere in the world. And it will be simple enough for you to be able to do the basic entry. Uh, as you grow bigger, you will probably need the small package. Small package is where we book keep your books for you and we'll meet you once a year, like Sir Ting say, and we run through the, the figures with you to help you with any gaps that we have. But the day-to-day -day will still be taken care by you. Once you go to the medium package is where we, we become like your in-house finance, but in an outsourced environment. We are like your HQ accounts department. We will then uh, take care of your books for you and your day-to-day -day finance, including payments and you know managing your thing. And you'll be able to meet something at the team six months, at least once every six months uh, to give you the numbers. And every month you'll be getting your financial dashboard. Okay, and the team will also give you some feedback of risk area or area to look at. That will be the medium. And when you go to a large package, it's probably that you need beyond just the day to day. You need someone like Shopping that will actively manage your accounts. That is where you probably look for funding. You, you have a shareholder meeting, you've got board meeting, and that's where it requires a lot of involvement uh, of a finance manager or an accountant to be part of your, your business. So that's how we support SME. We got the starter all the way to a large package. So if you need anything, uh, this is where you are. You can WhatsApp us at 018-373-2199. Uh, we can do, a, we all do health check. So we can do a finance health check for you or a payroll health check or even a finance. So if it's a finance health check, you just have to do hash F F. HC, and then we will be more than happy to run through the figure for you. No charge, obligation free. Okay, any last word for our audience before we end the day? Mm, well, I think this is a very good sharing uh, of some real life examples and some services that Intune can provide. Um, well, I uh, wish everybody well. Uh, I think uh, nothing much for me. I've already shared. A lot. Okay. Yeah. So to business owner outside there, I want you to know you are not alone. Uh, many business owners have the same struggle. Uh, from all our case study and from all our sharing, I want you to know that you are not alone. And uh, all the pain that you have is not something that is uh, very rocket science. Uh, that's where we come in. We can be the Panadol for you, and hopefully we can turn the Panadol into a vitamin C for you. With that, I want to end today's session with a video and I catch you again for Freedom Series in the future. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you. Intune Outsourcing is providing you a full scope of accounting from A to Z exactly like an accounting department with a CFO but not based in your office. Intune enters supplier invoices into accounts payable and do reconciliation with suppliers to make sure that our records are correct. Intune also processes payments to suppliers, staff and expenses updating sales invoices into accounts receivable including collection received 
providing statement of accounts to clients so that they can collect and chase money from their customers. Providing the financial reports, including but not limited to profit and loss, balance sheets, cash flow, debtors and creditors agent. Advisory and financial coaching, including presentation of accounts, highlighting key areas and key analytics to improve and grow clients' businesses. At the year end, we represent our clients to work with their auditors and tax agents for compliance matters. Intune also represent our clients to deal with different bodies and agencies such as Income Tax Office, Customs Department, EPF, SOPSO, and other authorities for matters relating to finance, business, and HR. So if you're still facing accounting problems, you need a professional like Intune to help you. Well, get Intune to fine-tune your decisions.